Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Growing in Grace. Mike Kapler here, Joel Brzezinski with me, and we're glad to have you with us too. Thank you for joining us once again. We know life is busy, and sometimes even finding 13, 14, 15 minutes out of, out of a busy day can be a challenge, and so we do appreciate you actually clicking that uh, play button or downloading us and taking a listen for, uh, for us uh, to be able to share with you more good news of God's grace, His unconditional love, the gospel. Last week we started talking about the tithe and whether it's part of the new covenant or not and examining the tithe just a little bit closer what is tithing I I think we sort of felt like we barely got launched last (laughs) week and the program came to an end and so hopefully this week we can jump a little bit further into it and I guess I kinda knew that would happen because you know I wrote and you can find this at on my blog at blog.graceroots.org Uh, Right at the top of the page, or near the top, you can find a link to a written series that I wrote about this, as well as an audio and video series that you can listen to. You can download it as an MP3, or you can watch it on YouTube. That, you know, series went pretty long. So I knew that there was a lot to say about this. You know, we're not going to hit all of those highlights, but we really just want to make the point about, you know, what tithing was under the Old Covenant, and how, now that we're in the New Covenant, that whole system through which tithing was needed Like we said, just to recap last week, there were 12 tribes. 11 of the tribes had an inheritance. They had land and animals through which they could eat. The 12th tribe, which was the Levites, they were given no such inheritance by God. And in fact, God told the other 11 tribes to take 10%, a tithe, of their crops and animals, bring it to the storehouse so that the Levites could eat. That was what the tithing system was all about. That system is over with. There no longer are priests. In fact, in this new covenant, what has happened is that we all, all of us, have become spiritual priests. It's a spiritual priesthood. It's a holy priesthood where all of us are priests. And you don't find us tithing to one another, <laughs> but we you see the church taking these passages out of context and uh, out of context and turning the storehouse into today's church and turning priests, the old covenant priests into today's pastors and it just doesn't fit. You really have to stretch to make that happen. And so another thing we touched on last week cap was that tithing wasn't about money. It was about food. It was about feeding people. Just before we got on here, you were talking about something. That I can't remember what you were saying, but I'll, maybe I'll just hand it over to you. Yeah, like I'm going to remember. <laughs> uh, we're getting too old to do this program. I don't I can't know remember how we anything. do it. <laughs> it's like next week you may hear the exact same program. <laughs> we couldn't remember what we did the week before. <laughs> it happens all the time. <laughs> it's probably good. It's good to repeat things. Yes, it is. And to repeat uh, for things, me, too. Especially. But, uh, so, yeah, tithing, it, it means a tenth. It does not necessarily mean to give a tenth of everything you have. It just means a tenth. And it, it's, it, this seems maybe, again, like I said last week, we're splitting hairs. It might seem irrelevant right now, but hopefully it's all going to come together for you here. And as Joel mentioned, it, it was all about the 11 tribes of the Israelites providing food for the Levite tribe, the priestly tribe. That's what tithing was established on because the, the Levite tribe did not inherit the, the land. And they were just providing ministry services to the rest of their brethren. And so the rest of the 11 tribes took care of them in that way by tithing crops and animals, as Joel was talking about. It was all about the food and providing for them in that way. It really had nothing to do with money. The only exception to that was at one time, God would designate a place for the tithe to be taken and for the Israelites to share in it with the Levites, by the way. And if it was too far for them to take their stuff, then they could exchange it for money, except uh, every third year they had to tithe fully, without exception, to the Levites. And so, but yeah, it, again, it's not about money. So there were Jews or Israelites who weren't necessarily farmers, who, who didn't necessarily raise animals, but they had money 
they worked other things. They did. They had other occupations. I mean, it was a different economy, obviously, than what we're in today. But it was still an economy, and and some people, you know, had money. They were never really instructed to, to tithe their money. And so I think we just wanted to bring that point home. And let me just insert here for those who didn't listen last week. I would encourage you to go back and do so at GrowingInGrace.org. We're not discouraging you from giving. We want to move more toward that, though, after we kind of sift through this tithing stuff, and then we'll talk about what giving means under the new covenant, I think, as we move forward, Joel. Yeah, and uh, you hit on something there, Cap, that um, you kind of just breezed right by it, but I think this is something that when I read this in the Bible, it just blew my mind, but you talked about how uh, there was a a time when um, they were told to take their tithe, which, again, was food. It was animals that they would kill and eat and it was crops that they had raised they were to take if it was too, if the place to go was too far for them because they were in this was after they had been uh, set free from Egypt and uh, they were wandering in the desert god had designated different places to bring the tithes if the place was too far they were to take their tithes and exchange it for money what you know when is that preached in church but, but then also take it, god told them take the money in your hand after you've exchanged your tithe for money now you have this money go to the place which the lord your god chooses and this is a quote from god you shall spend that money for whatever your heart desires for oxen or sheep for wine or similar drink for whatever your heart desires you shall eat there before the lord and you shall rejoice you and your household you shall not forsake the Levite who is within your gates, for he has no part nor inheritance with you. That's Deuteronomy 14, uh, where you can find all that. Again, they weren't to forsake the Levite. They need, you know, the Levites needed to eat too, but they were to t- <laughs> they were to buy stuff with the tithe. You know, they exchange it for money and buy stuff with it, whatever their heart desired. You're not going to hear that preached in uh, many churches today, uh, and that again is because they got the whole tithing thing all messed up. But the thing is, uh, with this with this tithe thing, again, people go straight to Malachi as the go-to verse for tithing. All of this was be- long before Malachi. By the time Malachi came along, the Jews had been forsaking the Levites. They had been forsaking what they were supposed to do with the tithe of their food. And so Malachi was a rebuke to them for not following these laws. And the Levites were going hungry, or they were having to go into the fields to work for themselves, and, and God didn't want them to do that. So, And I think there's even more stuff to bring out of this, Cap. Well, there, there were so many scriptures about the tithe in the early part of the Old Testament. But the one that we usually hear about in church is at the end of the Old Testament. And you would think this might be the only scripture on tithing uh, in the entire Bible. But again, as, as, we, as we've been talking here, you can find out there's a, a whole lot more to it than, than what meets the uh, church eye. Uh, Malachi 3.10, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. Now, I don't know how you feel about this, Joel, but I'm going to throw it out there. It's at least food for thought, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> we, we are led to believe that God was promising blessings. I believe what he was promising here was rain, because there, I, mm-hmm. I can point out several other scriptures to you. Genesis 7, 11 and 12, Genesis 8, 2, 1 Kings 8, 35 also implies it. Uh, just a few to mention, where God opens the windows of heaven, he's talking about rain when he opens up the windows of heaven, or closing the windows of heaven would mean a drought. And wouldn't that make more sense here based on what we've already talked about, where uh, the tribes of Israel, 11 of the 12, except for the Levites, inherited these lands to grow the crops, grow the food, and then bring it a tenth of it to the Levites to keep them fed. So anyway, I don't know. You and I, I don't, I don't think I've discussed this too much, so I want to see your thoughts on that. I think that's exactly the way it is. That's how I've uh, interpreted it for quite some time, uh, because what God was really doing there was he was telling the Israelites, you can trust me. You, you don't have to be selfish with the food that uh, you're raising. He said, you know, prove me in this was basically his way of saying, 
go ahead, bring the tithes to the storehouse so that, so that the Levites can eat, and you won't have to worry about this because I'm going to make it rain, and you're going to have all the food that you need. So don't withhold the stuff. Don't be selfish with it. Don't be greedy with it. But I'm going to provide for you, so just go ahead and bring the tithes so that the Levites can eat. And that's all it was. I think God yeah, was just saying at, that you can, you can trust me. And look at Malachi 3.11, the next verse. With this in mind, what we've just been talking about, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy what? The fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Mm -hmm. You see, the Israelites' inheritance was conditional also. If, if they obeyed God's commandments, he would continue to pour rain from the windows of heaven, and their seeds would be blessed. If you know they got away from that and disobeyed, got away from the commandments under that old covenant law. Sometimes the windows of heaven would, would stop the rain, cause a drought. Yep, exactly. I mean, and that's that's really all that was about. We try to spiritualize it in so many ways, but it really was just a practical thing in my mind. We, we got to wrap it up here, Cap, but one last thing. I know a lot of people will say, well, Abraham tithed, and he tithed before the law. And so we're under the new covenant. We're not under law. We're under grace. And so we should tithe like Abraham tithed. I think I can uh, fit this into the last little uh, few seconds here that we have here. But Abraham didn't tithe, again, of money. And it wasn't even his own stuff that he tithed of. Long story short, th there was a war going on between, I think it was four kings went to battle against five kings. So, I mean, this was a big war. In the process of that, Abraham's nephew, Lot, and his family, they were taken captive. Them and all of their belongings, all of their stuff. Abraham put together a little army of men. He went and fought in a battle, probably killing people, and brought back all of that stuff that uh, had been lost. In the process, he met Melchizedek, which was the local priest, and he gave a tenth of the spoils of war to Melchizedek. That was Abraham's tithe. Uh, there's plenty to be brought out of that in Hebrews 7, and we'll get into that next week. But for now, the bottom line is that it wasn't Abraham's own stuff. It was of the spoils of war, and it was a one-time thing. So if we, if we want to apply Abraham's tithe to the church today, then we're going to have to go to war, kill some people, and bring back uh, the booty and give that to the local king or the local priest. I am not encouraging anybody to do that. Just want to let you know as I say that. But that's really what Abraham's tithe was. Well, and Abraham also sacrificed animals before the law, so should we do that too? Exactly, Cap. That's a really good point. I mean, just because Abraham did something before the law doesn't mean... I mean, just think about how many things Abraham really did do in his lifetime that we don't do today... <laughs> so anyway, coming up next week on Growing in Grace, we're going to be talking about, you know, how this Levite tribe that we've been talking about, it, it no longer exists, but now, under the New Covenant, where the old is gone and the new has come, we have all become priests, according to the book of Hebrews. And so, while tithing had a purpose under the Old Covenant, the early church wasn't instructed to tithe. We're not instructed to tithe today, but how does the church respond when it comes to giving? What do we do? We're going to talk about this, uh, this new heart that we have, in which we have a desire to give under the New Covenant. That's coming up next week on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.